Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. Do you ever see trash in recycling bins? Today we're going to attack that problem by making a smart recycling bin. Let's get started. The idea came to me when I was just walking around my college campus and I realized just the sheer amount of trash that's being put in recycling bins. And I also realized the most recycled item, at least, are just soda cans. And I, I tried to do some research, and I found that for recycling like plants that, that um, process recyclables, they, they have to sort out the trash in some way. Um, that's often by a robot. But today, I want to try to alleviate that problem by basically stopping it at the source, making a bin that will somehow stop the user from putting trash in recycling bins. And I plan to accomplish this by using a webcam and a Raspberry Pi to identify the items that are you know, trying to be placed in the bin and to use some kind of mechanism that stops the user from placing the items into the bin that are trash. I also plan on using some LEDs or NeoPixels to signal the user that the bin is unlocked or locked. And since this project is going to involve me making my own machine learning model to um, you know, identify recyclables, I wanted to start with soda cans or soda bottles because again, overwhelmingly, they are the most recycled items, um, at least on my college campus. So I think that's a great you know, foundation to lay, but in the future, I definitely want to apply this to other recyclables, but it's a good foundation. For the design of the bin, I was thinking of keeping the overall like components to a minimum. I tried to make it like almost as generic as possible so that it could be replicated easily. And I made it into like a, um, a topper so that it could be placed into any generic um, recycling bin so that you could replicate it really easily. But this is going to be done at least with a 3D printed mechanism that uses a solenoid lock. I found that on Newark and that will unlock and lock the bin door, which will again will stop or let the user put recyclables in the recycling bin. I also wanted to make it spring loaded so that the user could simply push on a can and it would go into the bin instead of opening and closing a door or something like that on top. And additionally, I chose to use a Hall Effect sensor um, that's also found on Newark to detect when the door is open and when it's closed. This will also be done by mounting a small magnet on the door that opens. And I'm going to use a NeoPixel to indicate when the device is like searching for the can and it's probably going to count down to tell the user that it's about to open. Um, I just tried to make this project a little bit more I don't know, interesting for the user, just so it's not just like a blinking LED, but that's also an option. Also, I'm going to use a Logitech webcam, which has a 720p resolution. I opted for this camera because it's just, you know, very reputable. Um, I haven't had any problems running, like just, just using it, I guess. So it's a little bit more expensive than the webcam I used for my cheese ball project, but it does offer higher resolution. So hopefully this will um, just make it easier to identify cans and other objects. For the 3D design, like I mentioned earlier, I'm making a mount for the door and solenoid lock. I mounted it at an angle as I found that both it was easier for the lock to intersect the hole in the door and we needed a little bit more room for the spring. Otherwise the spring was going to be mounted on like practically sideways, which is just not ideal. You know, I created a lot of just prototypes, I guess, in AutoCAD or designs in AutoCAD, again my preferred CAD software. And I even made the, the top of the bin was going to be cut out of plywood, so I didn't 3D print that, but I did make one just to reference in CAD. I also left a little room to the left of the lock for both wiring and a spot for the Hall Effect sensor. And also, since the bin was going to be made out of plywood, I don't have a great jigsaw, and nor do I have that great like jigsaw experience. So um, I did design this little, like, I don't even know how to describe it, like an onion, like an onion looking design, just to cover up my, my, my I guess, my shoddy craftsmanship. But it, it made it look a lot better. And next to the onion, I guess, I created a um, little design just to cover the NeoPixel, which will diffuse the light and it will secure it. And I'll have to add with that, the onion and then the um, NeoPixel cover, both of those are really the only two main pieces that are not mounted with screws which I was really pleased with. I've kind of been trying to go more towards screws in my projects. Additionally, I created a mount for the camera. I was actually able to take apart the camera a little bit and put two washers in the plastic housing so I could easily like cover up all the screw stuff, which I was really happy with. 
And lastly, in the door, I created holes for the lock, uh, magnet, and spring. I wasn't sure like what kind of hinge I would use at the time, so I didn't include holes for that. But I later just, you know, drilled holes for the hinge and just mounted it later on, but I didn't plan for that. And that was pretty much it. I was very pleased with how satisfying the door was to open and close, and I think that goes back to using a spring. For some reason, springs are very satisfying for me, and it works well. I don't have to jiggle the door at all, so I'm pretty happy with that. Do you like free stuff? You can join the Road Test program. You can get free dev kits, test equipment, and even online training courses. In exchange for a detailed review, join our Road Test program. Learn more at the link below. Ah, free stuff? On to the electronics. I decided to use, again, a Pi 4 for um, the project just because it runs TensorFlow Lite pretty well. And I have experience using OpenCV on it, which TensorFlow Lite actually uses for object detection. And the wiring was overall fairly simple. I used a BD-135, um, I guess, NPN transistor to control the solenoid. And I was initially a little worried about the um, about watt and a half rating for the transistor but I have not run into any problems of it overheating or frying, which is, which is pretty good. And that's especially like probably a good thing that the door is only opening and closing for a few seconds. And that's about it. You know, it's not like always pulling on it basically. And everything else was very simple. You know, the NeoPixel was so small that I could just power it off the Pi, especially since I have a pretty beefy power supply on the Pi. And the Hall effect sensor is just using a um, 10K resistor to only give the Pi a high or low um, signal, I guess, when the magnet is nearby. And then the webcam is just simply connected by USB. And for the wiring, it really wasn't that bad. And while I was still working on the um, machine learning model portion of this project, I made a quick little program just testing the rest of the components to make sure they all worked. So I made a little program that um, was looking for when the magnet was not near the sensor to trigger the rest. And again, for the actual code, it will be detecting like a can, so I have it just using the Hall effect for now. And before I moved the magnet, the NeoPixel, you know, stayed on a constant red. And once moved, the NeoPixel changes to green, which indicates the user that the bin is about to open. Then the um, solenoid opens for about two seconds, and then it closes. And I was pleased with this. And this proved that all the components, and I guess my logic with program the components, it worked. So now on to the rest of the code. I'm going to go over some of the basic just code elements I have in the TF detection file. This file is used pretty much, pretty much everyone uses this for the TF light on the Raspberry Pi. It's just for the detection. So I just took the original file and adapted it to incorporate the elements we added, like the NeoPixel and the solenoid in the sensor. I added a few libraries that we needed. I also uh, set the transistor so the um, solenoid was locked and I, declare, and I declared a few pins. I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I didn't realize that since I had a TensorFlow environment on the Pi, a lot of the libraries that I downloaded for the, like, say, GPIO or just the board, those were actually not incorporated in, a, in the environment, which I did not realize until now. Also, this is the video stream class. I didn't really touch this. This is just taking the video stream from the webcam and processing it. You don't really have to touch that. And then below that, I have a cans and unlock uh, method. What that does is that when I say unlock, I want the NeoPixel to like do kind of like the wave thing I was showing where every um, NeoPixel was lit up individually. I did that in a for loop and that all turned green. And then it opened and waited 2.5 uh, seconds and then it closed. After that, it would turn red, same way I did earlier with the green. And then after that, we could have just ended it there and just said, okay, I guess it's locked. But using the Hall effect sensor, we're able to actually tell if the door is lined up or not, which is actually really nice. So I'm basically saying if the door is not closed, we are going to want it to open and close again. And like almost all the time it, you know, it'll lock back if for some reason it jams, which is pretty rare. After that, uh, this is kind of what it's actually looking for with um, making, like putting the boxes around the models that you have. But in all this, I basically just said right here, if the class that it identifies is bottle, which I got from the the, the label map uh, document. So for the Google model, it's just called bottle, but that also identifies most cans. So I'm saying if it recognizes that, then do the uh, method that I wrote up there for unlock. And that's pretty much it. It's really not 
a ton of code. Most of my code troubles, you know, came from making or attempting to make my own custom model, which I'd like to do in the future. But for just the like code on the Pi, it really wasn't a lot. Excellent, it works. I'm super excited to put my bin out on my um, college campus and just see the reactions. I'm excited to see that. But if you've ever worked on a recycling project or a TensorFlow project, let me know at the Element 14 community at element14.com presents. I'll see you next time.